Hello everyone and welcome to a very quick update on my adventures with Unraid. So this time I've been trying to do something quite specific um, and that's use my Unraid system to run Java programs that actually load data into my databases. The reason that I wanted to do this is that this is a good example of the kind of uh, input of data that you might do to something like Neo4j and it's a program that reads CSV files and then puts them into the uh, the database and it takes quite a long time um, because well there's a lot of data basically um, so what I wanted to avoid was having more than one computer doing this job so at the minute I have uh, my server running Unraid uh, which is fine so if I just quickly go to here you can see that uh, the import of the data is actually only using one CPU core more or less so that's not particularly intensive and of course this server is on all the time anyway um, but I originally started the import process from a different computer that's connected to the server over the network that's running this uh, Java program here which is reading a load of CSV files and putting them into the database and it's been doing it for about two days so in future I'd quite like to avoid this uh, and by this I mean having to run two systems to do data import data import sometimes going to be slow uh, it's just the way it is there's a lot of data um, so I've got no choice to do this uh, this will finish probably some point this evening or early tomorrow but of course I've now had two computers running for quite a long time where I could have had one. So what I decided to do was see if I could run Java in a Docker. And I did figure out exactly basically how to do this in a way that I think is okay. But actually I don't, I'm not that experienced of running things like this in Docker. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm breaking some kind of use case. I'll show you what I did and then maybe people can let me know if this is potentially not a great idea. So I made a um, Java Docker. I used the uh, standard. I used this template. So this is from Docker Hub. So I searched for it in the community applications and there was no Java version uh, there. Uh, but when I did a wider search on Docker Hub that was then I downloaded this container and that gave me the basic uh, container I just put this into advanced so I gave it a name I want to fix it on JDK, JDK 11 I don't want the latest one for, for my purposes I want version 11 for now at least I used the icon one other thing I changed was the maximum log file size. So these applications that I might run might end up producing really uh, large log files. And I decided that I would limit the log file size in here. I don't know if that's necessary or not actually. So that's another thing people could let me know about. So perhaps it's, uh, it's not required. Um, I've allocated certain CPUs to it to keep it away from some other things that might be running, but also reduce the number of CPUs available to Java if I've got a multi-threaded application. I also gave it a working directory that is accessible that's elsewhere on the cache and that's to keep the, the data files and the applications I'm running outside of the Docker image basically. So I think that's better. And then this is the, the, the sort of little trick that I came up with which is to run a this is a post argument on the docker execution and it means that it runs a essentially a file a script file in the bash shell so if I just click done and if I hit run now and then click on the log you can see it's executed I've obviously tried this a few times recently it's executed whatever was in that script in this case it was a Java application um, and that's here so I'm able to mount uh, the, that storage location on my 
workstation. And I've got uh, the script file there, just a bash script, which executes a Java program. This just outputs the help of this program that I've written. And there's the jar file there. So in theory, this should be quite uh, good. I can just drop in whatever Java program I want to, to run, change the script file, put any data in there, and then hit go, and it should just run it until it finishes and then stop. And with a bit of luck, uh, record what happened in the log, which ordinarily, unless something went wrong, I wouldn't need the log because obviously the only programs that I would run in here would be well tested. So they wouldn't be something that was experimental in any way. And the big applications that I've written that I would expect to kind of execute without any problems. And that's good because I can avoid this uh, for two reasons. One, it won't be going over the network which in some situations, although I think in this situation, the bottleneck is actually in the database itself. Um, and also it'll, it'll use the resources of the Unraid system to do the data imports. And that system's on all the time anyway. Uh, so I think uh, hopefully this would be a massive improvement because I think this, this application, like I said, has a few hours left to run and it's gonna I mean that uh, my entire desktop is switched on really when the actual number of resources it's using is relatively low. So you can see here CPU usage is only 13%. That's probably mostly because I'm recording this video. <laughs> um, and the rest of it is sort of basically idle. So I'm quite encouraged by this as a, as a possible way of doing this kind of thing. So I can just drop anything I want in here. And obviously, if I wanted to run more applications, I could just run another instance of the Docker. Uh, so I could just run another version that did something similar or run a custom command. This is like the general use one that I'm hoping I can just drop stuff in and then hit go. Uh, but obviously, I could uh, use Docker in the normal way and pass a command directly to it and it should should run. But uh, perhaps using the you know logging in via SSH or something. Um, but I think this is a nice way of using the kind of inbuilt Unraid uh, web tools to run a Java application in this way. And it was relatively easy to get going. Even someone like me who doesn't, uh, well, sort of historically, I haven't used uh, Unraid and Docker all that much, but I was able to kind of set this up and get it going quite well. So there we go. There's a little fun update uh, using Unraid for another thing, making the best use of the resources available because obviously I could have it all running. Most of this system is currently fairly idle as well and it's got plenty of spare memory so it would be a nice way to kind of use the resources of this system in a self-contained way and allow me to turn off my workstation. So yeah let me know if you think this is in any way not a good idea or if I could have done it in a different way that was actually better. It'd be interesting to hear about that. And also perhaps if this solves the use case that you may be thinking of um, and to allow you to run uh, applications through perhaps something like Java in a way like this, I could pres presumably do something similar. Um, there might be a sort of uh, a something similar. You could do it with sort of uh, Python. That might actually be a, a use case that's been uh, used by other people more because Python's perhaps a more popular language this kind of thing than uh, than Java is now. I still use Java for some stuff, but I actually use Go quite a lot. Um, interesting to try and use use Go with Golang in this way, actually. I might have a think about that as well in the future. I'll let you know how I get on. Okay, thanks very much, and I'll uh, see you in the next video.